credits. We have to decide what is conservative and what isn't conservative. Is it fiscally conservative to have a trillion dollar expenditure? We're not talking about giving people back their tax money. He's talking about giving people money they didn't pay. It's a welfare transfer payment. So here's what we have. Is it conservative to have a trillion dollars in transfer payments, a new welfare program that's a refundable tax credit? Add that to Marco's plan for a trillion dollars in new military spending, and you get something that looks to me not very conservative. Thank you. Governor. Governor Casey. No, I'm Let sorry, me come to sir. Governor Casey. No, Governor excuse Casey. Me, I was, yes, uh, excuse yes, me, I, need, one, I get one, to respond. Very, very yes, quickly, sir. Senator. No, I get my 60 seconds to respond. Quickly, He's talking please. about my tax plan. Please. So let me begin with this. I actually believe, first of all, this is their money. They do pay. It is refundable, not just against the taxes they pay to the government, but also the ta on their federal income tax. It's refundable against the payroll tax. Everyone pays payroll tax. This is their money. This is not our money. And here's what I don't understand. If you invest that money in a piece of equipment, if you invest that money in a business, you get to write it off your taxes. But if you invest it in your children, in the future of America, in strengthening your family, we're not going to recognize that in our tax code. The family is the most important institution in Nevertheless, society. Nevertheless, it's and not And yes, very I do want to rebuild the American Mark, military. I know that Rand is a committed isolationist. I'm not. I believe the world <laughs> is a stronger and a better place when the United States is the strongest military power in the world. Marco, Marco, how is it conservative? How is it conservative to add a trillion dollar expenditure for the federal government that you're not because paying for? How is it conservative? How is it conservative well, to add a trillion dollars in military expenditures? You cannot be a conservative if you're going to keep promoting new programs that you're not going to pay for. I may respond more quickly. Yeah. Quick we can't even have an economy if we're not safe. There are radical jihadists in the Middle East beheading people and crucifying Christians. A radical Shia cleric in Iran trying to get a nuclear weapon. The Chinese taking over the South China Sea. Yes, I believe the world is a safer... No, no, I don't believe. I know that the world is a safer and better place when America is the strongest military power on the, in the world. Marco, I don't, think, I don't think we're any safer. I do not think we are any safer from bankruptcy court. As we go further and further into debt, we become less and less safe. This is the most important thing we're going to talk about tonight. Can you be a conservative and be liberal on military spending? Can you be for unlimited military spending and say, oh, I'm going to make the country safe? No, we need a safe country. But you know, we spend more on our military than the next 10 countries combined? I want a strong national defense, but I don't want us to be bankrupt. Well, and, and there is a middle ground. Mr. Trump, th th there is a middle ground that gentlemen, brings both of these why, together. This is th there is a middle ground that brings both of these together. Th yes, which, the which, which is that is it is this. exactly right that we have to defend this nation. You think defending this nation is expensive, try not defending it. That's a lot more expensive, but you can do that and pay for it. You can do that and also be fiscally responsible. You know, I mentioned that the, the 25 programs that I put out today that I would eliminate them. Among them are corporate welfare like sugar subsidies. Let's take that as an example. Sugar subsidies. Sugar farmers farm on roughly 0.2 percent of the farmland in America, and yet they give 40 percent of the lobbying money. That sort of corporate welfare is why we're bankrupting our kids and grandkids. I would end those subsidies to pay for defending this nation. Senator, we Gentlemen, need to move, we need is, to move this on. Is why, this is why we must combine, actually, zero-based budgeting with tax reform. Because unless we can examine and cut and move every single dollar of discretionary spending in the federal government, we cannot reform taxes and reduce spending at the same time. Ask yourself this question. How is it possible that the federal government gets more money each and every year, which the federal government has been doing, receiving more money every year for 50 years under Republicans and Democrats alike, and yet never has enough money to do the important things? The answer, all the money is always spoken for. All the money is spoken for. So we have to go to zero-based budgeting, which is a simple idea. By the way, there's been a bill for zero-based budgeting 
It exists. It can be voted on. Every dollar must be examined. Any dollar can be cut. Any dollar can be moved. We have to go to a three-page tax code. You lower every rate. You close every loophole. Why? Because the government uses the tax code to decide winners and losers. You have to strip the corruption out of the tax code to pay for it. You have to know where every single dollar is being spent. We need so to you move, can cut where need you to, need to and invest where you need to. The two go to, hand in hand. We do need to move on. Mr. Trump, the, the U.S. has just... We, we ju just, I just, if I might, very we have to make our military bigger, better, stronger than ever before so that nobody messes with us, and in the long run, it's going to save us. I agree with Marco. I agree with Ted. We have no choice. And I can say this with certainty. We all have a different tax plan, some I don't totally agree with. One thing we understand... Each one of those tax plans is better than the mess that we have right now. Let's talk about Mr. Trump. No, no, Governor Kett, I really must move on. I want to move on. Mr. Trump, let's talk about the international economy. The U.S. Wait, has, Mr. Baker, the US has I, recently concluded... Every, wait a minute. Uh, Mr. Governor, Governor, please, can, I, I, we, really, we really need to move on, I Governor. think you were coming to me until no, they... No, Governor, I, I, I they, promise I would come to you. You've look, I hate to times. crash the party, Mr. You. Baker, but, you Mr. know, what's fair? Mr. Yes, sir. Mr. Trump, can I ask you about the, yes. the, the U.S. has just concluded an international trade uh, agreement with 11 countries in the Pacific. You've said that ra you'd rather have no deal yes. than sign the one that's on the table. It's a horrible but most deal. Economists, most economists say that trade has boosted growth, and every single post-war president has supported the expansion of international trade, including the last three Republican presidents. Why would you reverse more than 50 years of U.S. trade policy? The TPP is a horrible deal. It is a deal that is going to lead to nothing but trouble. It's a deal that was designed for China to come in, as they always do, through the back door and tr totally take advantage of everyone. It's 5,600 pages long, so complex that nobody's read it. It's like Obamacare. Nobody ever read it. They passed it. Nobody read it. Had a look at the mess we have right now, and it will be repealed. But this is one of the worst trade deals and I would, yes, rather not have it. With all of these countries and all of the bad ones getting advantage and taking advantage of what the good ones would normally get, I'd rather make individual deals with individual countries. We will do much better. We lose a fortune on trade. The United States loses with everybody. We're losing now over $500 billion in terms of imbalance with China. $75 billion a year imbalance with Japan. By the way, Mexico, $50 billion a year imbalance. So I must say, Gerard, I just think it's a terrible deal. I love trade. I'm a free trader 100 percent. But we need smart people making the deals, and we don't have smart people making the deals. The, the, the deal, as you say, the terms of the deal were published were published just last week, the detail, 5,000 pages of it. And 80% of U.S. Uh, trade with countries in the Pacific now, these countries, these 11 countries, is actually tariff-free. Uh, and these, uh, the, yes. the trade deal only affects the other 20%. Which, are there particular parts of the deal yes. that you think Well, the were currency manipulation, they don't discuss in the agreement, which is a disaster. Well, if you look at the way China and India and almost everybody takes advantage of the United States... China in particular, because they're so good. It's the number one abuser of this country. And if you look at the way they take advantage, it's through currency manipulation. It's not even discussed in the almost 6,000-page agreement. It's not even discussed. There was a separate, and, and as you understand, deal. I mean, you understand very well from the Wall Street Journal, currency manipulation is the single great weapon people have. They don't even discuss it in this agreement. So I say it's a very bad deal, should not be approved. If it is approved, it'll just be more bad trade deals, more loss of jobs for our country. We are losing jobs like nobody's ever lost jobs before. I want to bring jobs back into this country. Hey, Gerard, you know, we might want to point out China's not part of this deal. Yeah. True. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. That's right. That's but right. It's before we get a little bit off well, isn't that here. isn't that part of the problem if I may say senator that if that if this deal is not
ratified by, uh, by the US, by the Senate, then it would actually give China an opportunity to grow its economic leadership, which it's been seeking to do. And if the US is unable to pay, take part in this trade deal with these countries in Asia, China will take the lead. There is an argument that China doesn't like the deal because in us doing the deal, we'll be trading with their competitors. You're exactly right. But I think we've sort of missed the point a little bit here. There is an important point, though, about how we discuss these trade treaties that I do agree with Mr. Trump on. We should negotiate from a position of strength.